acknowledge the presence of uh, the African Union Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Honorable Professor Sarah Anyang Abo, who is joining us online. We have several people who are joining us online. Among them, Facebook's policy. The Deputy Minister of Health, Honorable Christe Kalamola Ganyasho, representative from the EU delegation to Malawi, Mr. Kramela Michel, all development partners at UNHP, the Director of the Plan International African Liaison Office, Mr. Samuel Noga, Country Directors of Plan International Malawi, Ms. Phoebe Kasoka, and four directors, representatives of both national and national organizations. The Ombudsman of the Republic of Malawi, Ms. Grace Tikambenji Malera. The Director General of the Anti-Corruption Bureau of Malawi, Ms. Martha Chizuma. The representative of uh, the Minister of uh, Education, Associate Professor and Director of Science, Technology and Innovation, Mr. Chomora Mikeka, and all senior government officials that Reporting are present in here. Progress. Chief Executive Officer of Akira Chicks, Ms. Linda Kamau, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to this event. As we focus the spotlight on the girl. We all do recognize the gains that the digital world provides to making our world a better place. But that should not blind us from recognizing the many challenges that also behoove us. That is why today we have gathered here different people from different professions with different experiences to discuss how we can harness the potential that the digital world presents to the young person, to the girl, but also how we can protect them from it. That is why the main thrust of this event is a roundtable discussion that we are going to have, where we are going to discuss in more depth issues that affect the girl. I'm not going to be alone moderating this event, I will invite Michelle Grace Piri, a young lady who is very, very capable, possibly even more capable than me, to take the event forward. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Michelle Grace Piri, our moderator and director of ceremonies today. Thank you so much, Joab. Um, at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to invite uh, the country director for Plan International Malawi, Ms. Phoebe Katsonga. Thank you, Ms. Phoebe. Thank you, uh, Ms. Piri, her honor, Madam Mary Chilima, spouse of the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, the African Union Commissioner for Education, Science, and Technology, Honorable Professor Sarah Anyang, uh, Facebook's Policy and Safety Manager, Africa, Middle East, and Turkey, Ms. Susan El Sayed, the Minister of Gender, Community Development, and Social Welfare, who is yet to join us, Honorable Dr. Patricia Kaliati, uh, the first Deputy Speaker of Parliament of the Republic of Malawi, Honorable Madaliso Kazombo MP, I think is yet to join us as well. 
the Minister of Information already here with us, Honorable Gospel Kazako, the Minister of Youth and Sports, I think yet to join us, Honorable Ulem Sungamo, MP, the Deputy Minister of Health, Honorable Christy Kalamla Kanyasho, MP, who is already here with us, the representative from the EU delegation to Malawi, Mr. Krimra Mikhail, all development partners and UN agencies present. I think we should have a representative from UNICEF, a representative, thank you, and you're welcome, a representative uh, from UNFPA as well, I think, confirmed participation. Thank you for joining us. Um, the Director of Plan International African Union Liaison Office, Mr. Samuel Noga, who is joining us uh, virtually online from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I want to also recognize all directors. I have seen the Director of Care, uh, Mr. Amos Zaindi. Thank you for being here with us. Save the Children did send in a representative as well. Um, Oxfam did the same. Oxfam, do we have Oxfam already here? Uh, we expect, I think, a representative from Oxfam uh, as well joining us here. Um, the Ombudsman of the Republic of Malawi, Miss Grace, Miss Grace Tikambenji Malera, who is already here with us. The Director General of the Anti-Corruption Bureau of the Republic of Malawi, Miss Martha Chizuma. I saw Martha arriving, yes. Uh, Martha is here with us. Welcome, Martha. Um, the representative of the Minister of Education, Associate Professor and Director of Science, Technology and Innovation, uh, Mr. Tomora Mikeka, and all senior government officials that have joined us here. A very warm welcome to you once again. Uh, we also are privileged to be joined by one of our chiefs. Uh, a very warm welcome uh, to you, Senior Chief. Mulolo from Sanje, thank you for joining us today. I uh, also recognize that we have uh, the Chief Executive Officer from Akirach, uh, from Akirachix, Miss Linda Kamau from, I think, sitting in Kenya right now. A very warm welcome to you as well. Members of the press, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my duty this afternoon is to welcome you to this event because we are co-hosting this event with our partners uh, one of our partners is Mutoto News, uh, based in Nairobi. Thank you for joining us, even within the pandemic, and a special thank you to you, uh, Honor Madam Mary Chilima, for making it. I know with the pandemic, it's very hard to get you around, but thank you for making it flexible to join us uh, this afternoon. We appreciate your presence. And I also want to recognize that you are free to be online ambassador and you have played that role very well over the last one year. And I want to say thank you so much. You've been a great ambassador. We've learned a lot from you. When we started out, you asked a lot of questions. And then actually you realize that we didn't have all the answers, especially around free to be online in Malawi. And I think what you have done has been exemplary, has been exceptional. You have gone online, you have read. Each of your speeches have been outstanding and the young people have simply loved the life that you have brought to this campaign. When we started out this campaign, it seemed like something that wouldn't work in a third world country like our own, where we have very limited access to gadgets, to equipment, but I think you began to put life to it, and I think that campaign has become alive. This year, as we commemorate the International Day of the Girl, I want to recognize that we will be talking about a digital literacy a generation. So I will not preempt what will be happening, and I do not want to spend more time than I'm scheduled to spend here. My remark was really to welcome you here, and just to say that our work as an institution is highly focused on the rights of girls. And as we gather here today, we need to keep that at the back uh, of our minds. We do also certainly work with our young men because we cannot achieve girls' rights without having our boys, without having our young men. 
And so they are part of the work that we do. So this afternoon, once again, I want to say uh, thank you so much, all of you that have joined us. And we do look forward to fruitful discussions. Our young people, I would like to recognize you in a very special way. A hand clap for our young people that have joined us. Thank you so much for joining us. I know we have young people joining us from other countries as well. And uh, Joab, who is uh, one of our coordinators for this ceremony, I hope you'll be able to pull that together in terms of the countries that are joining us today or somebody online. Uh, Jenny, if you can hear me, if you could speak into the young people that have joined us here in terms of the countries where they are coming from, that would be highly appreciated. Once again, a very warm welcome and let's do have very good deliberations. Thank you so much. I would like to invite um, the young women, the AEU commissioner, to the podium to deliver her speech. Madam Commissioner. Let's just give the commissioner a few minutes. Right, uh, let's proceed. Yeah. All right, um, I'm just being informed that um, Honorable Sarah Ayang Oba will be joining in online. So she is the African Union Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology Innovation. Honorable Sarah. Um, hi, Michelle. Uh, unfortunately, the commissioner is not available at the moment. Um, so we can move on, and when she joins in, we can uh, we can give her time to 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 speak to us. Um, so if we can move on with the with the with the program.
Uh, we are supposed to have uh, the Honorable Sarah Anyang Abo. Uh, she is supposed to join us online. We are still trying to get her connected to the platform so that she can deliver her speech. Uh, but while we're doing that, we've got a performance for you. Uh, we're going to invite Nyago, who is going to come forward and perform as part of the program to entertain us, but also uh, to uh, add some color to this event after which we're going to see if we can get connected to um, the Honorable Sarah Anyango Abo, the African Union Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology and Innovation. Uh, but for now, I will invite our team to set up for Nyago, who's going to give us a, what I believe is going to be a scintillating performance. Nyago, this is your time. Thank you very much for having me today. Sweet, 
Chinga bauli mama ne wali nyoko wako nyoko wako wali mtumbu wako Chinga bauli e wali mwana wako Uli wali ngazi wako Chinga bauli mama ne wali nyoko wako nyoko wako Chinga wauli e wali mwana wako Uli wali ngazi wako E mama Ndaera ndaera e mama e Chu chu chu, 
Jati mana kane na chu 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 mana kane na chu aye mana kane na chu 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 mukuru biri ni hinu mana kane na chu 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 mana kane na chu 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 mana kane na chu 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 mukuru biri ni jati mana kane na chu chu he mana kane na chu he he mana kane na chu 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 mukuru biri ni. Thank you, Nyago, for the wonderful performance. Uh, allow me, guest of honor, to recognize uh, the presence of Senior Chief Mlolo. Senior Chief Mlolo, you're welcome. At this point in time, I would like to invite Honorable Patricia, Dr. Patricia Cagliati, who will deliver a speech. And after that, she will invite our guest of honor for today, her owner, Madam. Mary Chirima, spouse of the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi. Thank you. I'm sorry, Your Excellency, for coming late. I'm coming from Kotakota, where we were launching a national, international day of uh, girl child. My apologies. Uh, Your Excellency, the wife to the uh, Vice President, Madam Mary Shirima. Your Honorable Minister of Information, Honorable Kazako. The Deputy Minister of Health, Honorable Chris Kanyaso, Your Excellency, the Facebook Policy and Safety Manager, African Middle East and uh, Turkey, uh, Ms. Suzanne Asayad, the Your Excellency, the Country Director of uh, Plan Malawi. Madam Fibe Kasoga, the Ombudsman of the Republic of Malawi, and Madam Grace uh, Malera, the Director General of Anti Corruption Bureau of the Republic of Malawi, and Madam Martha Chizuma, the representative of uh, the Minister of Education Associated Processor. The professor, the senior chief Mlolo uh, from Sanje, and all the chiefs present. Uh, 
Uh, here we have uh, the, deputy, the deputy speaker of parliament, but uh, in, in absentia, let me recognize him. The executive director, the executive officer, Madam Mulinde Alinda Kamau, members of the press, invited guests, and all my seniors present this afternoon. My humble this afternoon is to request Your Excellency, Madam Mary Kirima, to deliver your keynote address during this Pan-African Roundtable discussion, which has been organized by uh, 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 Plan Malawi to commemorate the 21st, 2021st International Day of uh, a Girl Child, whose theme is Digital Generation, Our Generation. However, before I do that, allow, just to say, allow me just to say a few words. Your Excellency, first and foremost, let me commend Plan Malawi for organizing this event, which has been organized in collaboration with the Plan International Africa Union Legion Office and also Total News to give an opportunity to young girls to interact with young women who will inspire them. Remember, Your Excellency, I am a Form 1 student. So you can see the uniforms of uh, some of us, the newly uh, elected uh, students from Standard A to Form 1. They're like this. The girls are also be able to present their voices for action to the duty bearers. It is also encouraging to note that there are about three African countries participating in this event. Malawi is one of the 170 member states of the UN since the inception of uh, the 2012 of uh, International Day of African Girl Child. As government, we've been doing a lot, and this day is to remind us to take stock what is that we've done in the girl education's rights as well as education. but also to make, allow the girls to tell us what is it that they're looking for as government to do for them. The commemoration theme for this year is indeed very interesting and significant because every day we get misinformation about stereotype presented about, uh, presented about girls. This is why there is a campaign to encourage government to ed uh, educate girls and also children in digital literacy so that they are able to identify false information. The Minister of Information, I can also bear with me that they are part, and, part, of, part of the programs which the government has set aside. We have uh, trade centers in some of the constituencies where we are looking forward to start operating, which will also wake up as, a, as a internet cafes. But also as government, we have uh, computer labs in also take part and also participate in the new technologies which we are having. Apart from that, we are so working hand in hand with our private sectors and the uh, government, international as well as uh, local NGOs, i.e. the service providers, which we would like to thank Minister of Information for the programs set aside, especially a TNM with Muzuato, where the gadgets which we are using uh, they are also providing some sort of internet services and encouraging the communities to have the gadgets at a fair price. And when they get it, they are also to get a 1% of the process. And they can even ask the TNM to build uh, whether schools or internet labs or whatever they are looking forward to have. So it's one way of encouraging the community to have the facilities with them by having gadgets from TNM. Therefore, as a minister responsible for gender, children and uh, social affairs, the theme gives us a number of questions and hope for the girls, child, and young women. I'm also uh, encouraged to, to think that boys should also be addressed during this time because they are also to reinforce uh, the stereotype of girls and young women wrongly at times. 
And uh, when we are, uh, I remember, or oh, we can bear with me that we are killing, killing a number of birds with one stone. This time we are also going to implement the GBV, uh, the Gender Based Violence Act of 2006, but also enforcing the, the, gen, the, uh, the Child Act and uh, Child Care and Justice Act of 2010. Whoever enforces a girl into marriages is supposed to face a 10 year uh, penalty in jail. And this is in the uh, section 83 of the uh, Child Care and Justice Act of 2010. Your Excellency, we are focusing very much on the girl, on the boy child as well, because we are looking forward that the boys should also respect the rights of girls. Because they're the ones who take nude pictures and post them in the internet, in WhatsApp, and the like. But also it's a message to girls that why should you allow men or boys to take your nude pictures and post them in the WhatsApp, even in the Facebooks. Time has come that we need to be reporting, though you've been coming to say, coming forward, voicing out that we need to look into you. Yes, we are very ready and we're spending sleepless nights thinking of what is it that we're supposed to do as we're focusing very much on the 2030 agenda, which we are having only eight to nine years, but also the vision, Malawi vision 2063, where his excellency, the state president, Dr. Laza Sagwe, is saying the Malawi which we want, and we should not even leave anyone behind, and we know, and even his excellency knows that the ones who are behind are women and girls. So we need to also look into the affairs of our girls and protect them, but also educate them. And we believe in that when we ed educated a girl child, we, that is an automatic empowerment of women in Malawi. So the, their inclusion as boys in the program that promotes the girl child is vital so they can also understand government's intervention in this regard. I am aware that the boys and uh, young men misconceptions make the, make the girls' situation very uh, saddening. Hence the call for their inclusion. Your Excellencies and all my seniors, cyber bullying and also harassment in the, is a serious problem during the digital generation which is within our generation. Being the policy holder of gender, children, and disability, community, and social affairs, I take it up myself and also my ministry to ensure that the myth and also misinformation surrounding girls and young women is addressed. I therefore look forward to receiving the booklet which is being produced in this area, that it is my hope that we will distribute if, that it will be distributed widely. I also call upon the media, in Malawi as the fourth uh, arm of government, which we are saluting very much for the job well done. You've been with us and you've been working together even during this period of COVID, telling us where we are challenged and what is that we're supposed to do. And uh, we trust and believe and also uh, thank you as, as the Minister of Gender that uh, without you, some of the things you couldn't know what is happening on the ground. But. Uh, Knowing that the work which you do, the media of Malawi, to develop Malawi focused booklet with which we will also address the issues affecting Malawian girls and young women. And we hopefully that we are going to do that together. This will help to, to identify the stereotyping of uh, the girl child. My minister will also work very closely with the plan Malawi, which we've been doing it. and. Uh, uh, with the consortium of Plan Malawi and other stakeholders across the areas of uh, their work to ensure that the issues the girls will present are addressed. I also call upon all the girls to ensure that their voices are heard by joining the girls' lead movement on making their voices heard. I also call upon all other stakeholders gathered here and across the African continent to emulate what plan has done in the Pan-African region and Malawi in particular. On behalf of all Malawian girls, those some who are here and also out listen to us, would like to thank you very much. Your Excellency, and through you, the Malawi government, the president, the vice president for the programs set aside for a girl child. And I'd like to thank you, Plan Malawi, that we've been together for the scholarship, for the programs, for the, the take, take off programs which were encouraging girls to work hard and nurturing the new generation of uh, women leaders, leaders of uh, substance and also 
uh, making them also to believe that some of us women whom they are they able to see, we've gone through the situation in which they are, but we managed to stand in our shoes firmly to say no to sexual harassment, to early marriages, to early pregnancies, and we focus very much on education, that's why we are here, breathing, and we do know that when you've educated a girl, you've educated a nation, but also you've earned the GBVs which are so rampant in Malawi. That's why we are focusing very much on the education of a girl, and that's why we are here commemorating the International Day of a Girl Child. As I'm saluting the local as well as international NGOs, we have a lot of resources which our partners are having. What we are looking forward is to have programs to see, to eat that our children, our girls are really being included in the programs which we are doing. The steps and the gear which we've taken plan Malawi, please. We've been announcing a number of early marriages and we thank the magistrates, the Minister of Justice, the judiciary, for the enforcement of the legislations and also the police, and calling upon the other police units and also stations to do likewise, because we have a number of cases where when we are giving reports, we keep saying a girl has been impregnated by a nun, where we wonder whether we have been having uh, issues of uh, pregnancies by unknown people. So we need to polish up as, as our, our seniors from the police that please help us as we are joining hands together to look into the affairs and the rights of our girl child. It is my hum humble responsibility and privilege to request your excellency, Madam Merechlima, to deliver your key note addressed. Ladies and gentlemen, the spouse, the vice president of the Republic of Malawi, Madam Merechlima. Uh, thanks so much. Remain blessed. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Let me start by uh, acknowledging all the girls in the world for whom we celebrate today. We honor you, we respect you, and we root for you. The African Union Professor Sarah Anyang Agbor, Facebook's Policy and Safety Manager, Africa, Middle East and Turkey, Ms. Susan El Sayed, the Minister of Gender, Community Development and Social Welfare, Honorable Dr. Patricia Galiati, the First Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Mandali Soka Zombo MP, the Minister of Information, Honorable Gospel Kazako, the Minister of Youth Sport and, and Sports, Honorable Lemus Sungama, the Deputy Minister of Health, Honorable Chrissy Kalamula Ganyasho, representatives from the EU delegation to Malawi, Mr. Krimela, Michelle, all development partners and UN agencies, the director of the Plan International Africa Union Liaison Office, Mr. Sami Onoga, country directors of Plan International Malawi, Ms. Phoebe Kasoga, and all directors and representatives of international aid organization and national organizations. The Ombudsman of the Republic of Malawi, Mrs. Grace Tikambenji Malera, the Director General of the Anti-Corruption Bureau of the Republic of Malawi, Ms. Martha Jizuma, the Representative of the Minister of Education, Associate Professor and Director of Science, Technology and Innovation, Mr. Chumora, Senior Chief Malola from Sanje, the Chief Executive Officer, Accurate Chicks, Mrs. Ms. Linda Kamau, Members of the press, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm truly honored to deliver this keynote address during the Pan-African Roundtable panel discussion to mark the commemoration of the International Day of the Girl Child. Our theme today, Digital Generation, Our Generation, is aptly named to represent the fourth revolution, which is the digital revolution. 
As Africans, we may not have adequately participated in the first three revolutions, but the proliferation of mobile technology in Africa means that we are poised to take full advantage of this digital revolution. With one billion Africans and rising now able to access the internet, the time to jump in and participate, to contribute and reap results is now. We need, to treat the digital we need to treat digital inclusion and digital participation with the urgency it requires. Two key lessons that we can draw from the past two years are, number one, the world can shut down seemingly overnight. Highlighting our reliance on technology to remain relevant. And number two, specific to us women and, and girls everywhere, is that all of our strides towards attaining gender balance can be easily eradicated. Decades worth of progress can be eliminated if we allow it. I'm therefore very glad to be part of a conversation that seeks to empower women and girls through digital inclusion and participation. The internet has the power to drive economic growth through enhanced access to health, education, and business opportunity. The cost of being offline is substantial. We recently experienced a social media blackout when Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp went offline. I actually thought that the whole internet was down. This just goes to show how much we rely on digital spaces for socializing, learning, earning, dialoguing, and debating. This is why it is critical that girls should participate fully in these platforms, as they might just be the silver bullet to leveling the gender playing field and catapulting our African girls into prosperity. Unfortunately, the gender gap for global internet using is, users is growing from 11% in 2013 to 17% in 2019, and at least 43% in, in least developed countries like Malawi. The reasons for this phenomena include inadequate access to internet, low digital literacy levels, and prohibitive costs. Along with South Africa, Zimbabwe, and the Seychelles, Malawi has one of the highest data costs in the world. Considering that we are one of the poorest countries, and notwithstanding the healthy profits that this segment makes, and taking advantage of the presence of the Honorable Minister of Information, I trust we can do better on the data costs. With reference to the high data costs, let me take this opportunity to commend the Malawi government for introducing free Wi-Fi in schools, hospitals, airports, and markets. This is a transformational development. For women and girls, digital technologies can save time and help relieve the double burden of unpaid work, unleashing a myriad of opportunities. Digital platforms and the exposure they bring will enable our girl child to dream big, to reach for the stars, and to escape the clutches of child marriage and child pregnancy. By availing our girls digital access, we will effectively grant them a passport out of poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, we may ask each other where to from now. But like every great revolution, we need to start at the grassroots, at the individual household level. We have to encourage parents to plan their families and only have children that they can actually afford. And if those children are girls, let us accord them equal opportunity to learn and grow. Let's empower our daughters and sisters by simple acts simply helping them with chores so they have more time to study, seeking their opinions so that their voices are heard from a young age. One out of four girls feel less confident to share their views. We need to block out cultural stereotypes that inhibit our girls' growth. On a communal level, as women and girls, we need to take charge of our destinies. I truly believe that if we demonstrate that it is in men's best interest to promote women, they will do it with vigor. I mean, if, a, if men can go on tour in space for a day, surely they can promote gender and attain gender parity. The onus is on us women and, and the male advocates who understand and support us to explicitly demonstrate our value. 
We need to strengthen our networks as women, promote and empower one another, and stand up and be counted. We need to question our lack of representation and pressurize reforms to represent us. As we encourage our girls to actively participate on digital platforms, we need to ensure that the girls are indeed free to be online. The digital platform needs to be safe from abuse, violence, and harassment. We require platforms that are conducive to education, growth, and success. Recent studies indicate that in addition to cyberbullying and online harassment, social media platforms as they stand today promote depression, low self-esteem, body dysmorphia, and isolation. Applications such as filters may seem innocuous at first, but they prey on the impressionable minds of our girls, leading them to aspire for unrealistic ideals. Misinformation and disinformation restrict girls' activism, leading to girls feeling despondent, stressed, worried, and anxious. I'm glad to see that platform, platforms such as Facebook are now flagging fake news stories and closer to home, Ntoto News has partnered with Plan International Malawi and Plan International African Union Liaison Office to address matters of fake news by an extensive program that will culminate in the production of a child-centered booklet. I understand this booklet is aimed at debunking myths and that misinformation and stereotypes presented about who girls are will be a thing of the past. What the girls study, what they can achieve in life are all areas that are being targeted by malicious um, people who wish to discourage our girls from achieving their full potential. Videos and images are manipulated to shame them. There are also fake facts about, COVID, about the COVID-19 vaccine. And sometimes emerging young female leaders are undermined with rumors and conspiracy theories. This campaign underscores the need for all young people to be able to question information and check facts before they believe them. This is commendable. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by making the following appeals. To the remaining five members of the African Union to ratify the Malabo Convention, to ensure we have adequate e-commerce and data protection as well as to promote cyber security and combat cybercrime for all, but especially for our children. To government leaders to enforce the criminalization of cyberbullying, online harassment, privacy security infringement, and the sexual manipulation of children online. For government leaders and policymakers to introduce girl-child-driven inclusivity strategies by providing platforms that allow girls and women to clearly articulate their needs we need relevant content and substance in our everyday languages online if we're going to participate fully. To African governments, once more, my appeal is that post this pandemic, efforts to increase structural infrastructure are, in, are reinforced. Our girls and their families need access to clean water and electricity so that they do not spend a million hours a year drawing water or fetching firewood. This is time that could be spent advancing their digital prowess. We appeal for strong policy intervention and support programs that make ICT tools more accessible and make STEM sub subjects attractive and attainable for girls. I appeal to platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, to provide more rigor when enrolling new users. In this age of big data, a little more effort can be made to protect children, especially girls from platforms that they do not have the maturity for. Children should not be subjects, should not be subjects or subjected to pornography and other adult content. To our partners, thank you for all you do, but we need your further support for programs that will offer digital literacy to drive digital inclusion. Furthermore, we need practical measures to be safe online, tips on how to deal with harassment, as well as preventing hacking and doxing. A helpline for such matters would also be appreciated. Please continue with the awareness campaigns aimed at parents and communities. 
To my fellow parents, let us promote digital access for our children from a young age to help them build skills and confidence. Let us overcome gender-based social and psychological barriers by combating the highly patriarchal social structures that are prevalent within Africa. We cannot sit back and allow the digital platform to become another avenue for aggravated gender inequalities. The digital revolution provides a unique opportunity to connect the world instantly. It has completely changed how we socialize, how we do business, how we find love, and how we live. It is the future. Our generation is indeed the digital generation. Let's ensure that our women and girls are empowered to participate. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, you can take your seats. And thank you so much, Your Honor, Madam Mary Chilima, for those remarks, we really appreciate. And as always, we're always grateful uh, for your presence and participation in activities like these. Ladies and gentlemen, I did indicate earlier that as part of this event, we're going to have a very important discussion. It's one round table discussion although we don't have a round table in front, but still, it's gonna be a round table discussion that has been split in three. It's going to be a three-part discussion that is going to be handled by young moderators. And that makes me remember how old I am now when I say young moderators, because I, I wish I were part of that bracket, but as it turns out, I no longer am. Um, the first, part of this roundtable discussion is going to discuss the opportunities that exist in the digital world for girls and young women. And to handle this discussion, I would like to invite the Honorable Minister of Information, Honorable uh, Gospel Kazako, to come forward and take his seat on my far right. I would also like to invite Mr. Kramila Michel, uh, head of the social sector section at the EU delegation in Malawi to come forward and take uh, the seat that's next to uh, Honorable Kazako. We are also going to get um, joined by two young ladies who are joining us online. And just to be sure that they are online, could I ask them to just check in with me? We will have uh, Belize from Malawi. Belize, can you tell us if you are online, please? Just say, yes, I'm online. Thank you very much, Joab. She's here. Is she attending physically? Please come forward, Belize. Thank you so much. But someone who is definitely joining us online should be Maria. She's from Namibia. Namibia, if uh, Maria, if you can hear me, can you just kindly say so? Belize, if you can come forward and take this seat here. Let's just make sure that uh, Maria is uh, uh, online and I would like to hear her talk. I'm sure that our technical team is uh, still trying to sort out uh, their gadgets to make sure that uh, Maria uh, joins us. I'm sure she's online, but probably there should be an audio glitch somewhere. Our guest of honor, you're also invited to be part of this discussion and uh, we will put you on the spot physically uh, right there at the middle. Uh, so please do come forward and take your rightful position in front. You have the rare privilege of uh, sitting through 
all the three parts of this discussion because uh, we would like to get your input in all these uh, matters. Thank you. Uh, Taxi Michelle is going to speak on behalf of Maria. Maria is having uh, connectivity issues. Um, Michelle from Kenya is going to speak on behalf of Maria. We are still trying to get representation from Namibia. Let me check if Michelle Nganga is online or Clem. Uh, Michelle, are you online? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Or Clem? Is Clem online? Uh, I am online. Michelle? Yes. Thank you so much. I'll request that you speak up a bit when you are making your contribution, Michelle. For now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite the young lady who is going to moderate this discussion, and she is a member of the Global Young Influencer Group. This is a group of activists that shape the Free to Be Online campaign, and this is Malumbo Banda. Let's put our hands together for Malumbo Banda. I'm now going to hand over to our moderator for the first part of this discussion, Malumbo Banda. Can we bring her, her microphone, please? Am I audible enough? Okay. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Malumbo Banda. I'm the member of the Global Young Influencer Group and your moderator for this session. Um, my co-moderator is Ali Kigundu from Uganda. Ali, can you give us a shout out online if you if you're available? Yes, I'm around. Hi. Okay. So as Joab said, uh, this panel discussion is, is basically for us young people, as young people to hear from Judy Bearers and young girls in terms of how we can navigate the online space and uh, the digital world. And so the first, the first point of discussion is what are the opportunities in the digital world for girls and young women? I'll ask uh, the Minister of Information, right Honorable Gospel Kazako, to tackle this. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, first, let me say that uh, the people of this country are very lucky. Lucky in the sense that um, they have a government that is very aware and very fluent on matters uh, digital. Our intention is to create a digital economy, uh, but a digital economy that will be inclusive. And that inclusiveness must be measured by women. Uh, generally, uh, we believe strongly that the future is female and that uh, if we are to um, realize the dreams that we have, if we are to obtain uh, the vision that we have, then we must make sure that as many girls as possible uh, things will be scratching an elephant on the back and we might not move at the speed that we want to move. So uh, we are looking at the laws, we are looking at the operationalization of the whole mood that we have, that we have to obtain, we have to achieve uh, the digital uh, development that we need. But let me also take this opportunity to say this, that um, as we're doing that, we know that uh, the digital thing, the digital development, the digital 
uh, um, achievement that we want to procure uh, is just one item, but we have to do a number of things. Uh, this is why uh, we have put in place mechanism to make sure that uh, we have uh, increased the um, access to electricity because all these things are actually run by electricity. If it's not electricity, it has to be any form of energy, either solar or otherwise. We want to get to the rural areas because in Malawi, the majority of our people are in the rural areas. So we are investing very heavily in that area with uh, so intentional making sure that uh, the digitalization, uh, the presence of our young people, our young women, our young girls uh, is made easy. Uh, we're also looking at um, investing heavily in education because you see only those uh, that have some basic education will be able to participate uh, in this uh, divide. Otherwise, if you are illiterate, it becomes slightly difficult for you to participate. So we really need to do much more uh, uh, on matters education and the, not just education, but education for girls. This is why you see that our first lady and uh, of course the, uh, 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 her owner, uh, the, the spouse of the vice president are always leading in this uh, onslaught to make sure that as many women as possible have access to education. All this again is done uh, with a view to ensuring that uh, our women, our girls are able to participate uh, uh, online. Uh, of course, they also have to be safe and they, they, they have to, to, to be there uh, very comfortably. Uh, one would be surprised why we are also working very hard on food security because at the end of the day, food security is very key. I mean, hungry people will not be online, you know, they'll be weak. So it is also our, um, our big, big uh, dream that uh, not just maize and beans and soya, no, I think we are actually upping our nutrition because there is much more in food. It's not just a question of having basic food, but we want to have young women, young girls who are fully developed, whose intellect can also develop on time, and uh, when they develop intellectually and otherwise, they'll be able to also participate uh, effectively uh, uh, online. We're also working on uh, uh, in on matters on the, on healthy uh, to make sure that they have uh, we have enough and adequate healthy uh, uh, facilities across the country. Uh, all this is to create a healthy population. And um, you see, we are a democratic nation, and uh, the majority of our people are women. And if indeed we are truly democratic, I think it's only fair that we give a bigger portion of what is happening in this country to women, because these are in majority. So whatever we are doing, we are doing to make sure that we are breeding women, we are preparing women, we are manufacturing women, we are producing women, <laughs> women that are, are, are educated, women that are aware, women that are empowered, women that can participate, the women, women that have confidence, women that uh, I can stand up. Um, the reason sometimes we also believe strongly we have very few women leaders uh, in government, in private sector or otherwise, is uh, because of the level of confidence that uh, these women have, uh, the level of opportunity that, that these women have. So the, most of the things that I've mentioned here put together, they will create a compendium. Uh, that will come in and usher in a product that will see many women participating uh, online. And the online uh, is now a source of knowledge. I think our education is being structured and restructured. Uh, very shortly, we'll have a maybe, we'll be starting to have a university with maybe physical uh, uh, students on campus, maybe three, 4,000, but those online, maybe 20, 30,000. We'll be graduating a lot of uh, 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 students from tertiary uh, centers, um, uh, all this uh, thanks to what we're doing. So whatever we are doing, we are doing to ensure that women are there to participate. But also we have introduced free zones for Wi-Fi. We know that uh, Wi-Fi uh, is the highway, is the opportunity for people to access information, for people to be able to participate. And uh, uh, government, uh, the, uh, the government of Dr. Laszlas McCarthy Chaguera has introduced free Wi-Fi in markets, in hospitals, in airports, 
in universities, in secondary schools. At the moment, we are targeting about 32 uh, centers, but uh, very shortly, we're looking at over 500 centers, where, uh, in fact, there will be a, a deliberate policy that uh, we have to start with the uh, hotspots where we have many uh, women, many young girls, uh, many female students, and so on and so forth. Because uh, if we cannot empower our women, uh, I think the future is doomed. Is doomed because the women are the manufacturers of a culture. These are active participants, active contributors to our social construction. And uh, uh, our so social construction will breed a culture and in this case, the culture will be driven by digital means. And if we leave women aside, or if we leave women behind, then I think we are not going anywhere. You know, it might sound a little awkward, but that's a, the that's a truth. So I think he, uh, the president is always reminding us that uh, we must make sure that uh, whatever we do in MDAs and uh, you know, government-wide, uh, we are creating opportunities uh, for women, because uh, for a long time men have been tried. I think it's high time we started looking at what women can offer. You know, for a long time women, men have been there and we're still hungry in other areas. Our health sector is still in tatters. Our infrastructure will have to rebuild it now and so many things. So we have a special, uh, um, a special pocket uh, in whatever we are doing in government to make sure that uh, our women, our young girls, become active uh, participants uh, 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 in these things. But let me also say lastly that we are aware as a government that uh, most of the po poverty occurs amongst women. Women are the poorest. They have no access to loans. They have no ac access to business opportunities. They have no access to so many other things. This is an area that we're working on. But we're working on these areas because we know that if women are going to be active in business, if women will be the machinery to, to make money, to be able to make revenue, to be able to stand on their own, they'll be able to afford matters digital, they'll be able to afford matters internet, they'll be able to send their kids to school and so on and so forth. And then this culture that we want to, to construct will be very, very easy. Because the, let us be realistic here, and let us be honest here, women have been trampled upon for a very long time. And I think in this era, uh, women can only urulate and celebrate because they have a government in place uh, that is very turned up to make sure that women are not left behind. And a government that is fully aware that if we leave women behind, then I think we are not going anywhere. Women are the future, and the future is female. And let me repeat that whatever we are doing in government, we are doing it centrally to ensure that um, uh, women have the space. It's still very saddening to see very few women in parliament. It's still very saddening to see very women in, in so many other places, in the corporate world and others, including in the CSOs, you know, almost everywhere. It's very, very saddening to see and depressing, of course, to see uh, very few women in business. Uh, this government, uh, we are working towards that because we know what had happened maybe the past 40 years, the past 30 years, the past 20 years. We know what happened uh, for women to lose their confidence, for the, for the women to lose their space, for the women to, uh, to be ignored. We will not ignore women. Because if we do that, then I think they will not be able to participate on matters digital. And if they will not participate on matters digital, uh, the much touted uh, digital economy that we want to create will just be a far-fetched dream. So uh, I can tell you a lot, almost the whole day, of what uh, uh, this government is doing. But I want you to be assured that as government, all we are doing is to make sure that uh, this is why you now have a, uh, a female ombudsman. In fact, I don't like it when I say a female ombudsman because it just has to be an ombudsman. It doesn't have to be qualified. Uh, already to say a female ombudsman, already that's, uh, uh, that's something that is negative. We have the, um, the director general for the anti-corruption bureau uh, who is a lady. Uh, we have so many uh, commissioners in the Malawi, High, um, uh, Malawi Human Rights Commission. Uh, for the first time, we have a representative of our nation in the United States uh, who is a female, Dr. Chimbir, and so on and so forth. So that is the signal that we are sending, 
that uh, we are a, a, a government that believes strongly, not just by way of talking, but by way of uh, uh, um, uh, giving out things that we think are very practical and things that would be necessary for us to move and develop. Uh, let me stop there. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Honorable Kospo Kazako. Uh, just a reminder to our online audience, if you have comments, pending questions, you can always do that in the chat box. And indeed, the, the future is indeed female. And it is only imperative that as a nation, we invest in girls' education. Uh, right now, I'd like to call upon Mr. Kimer Michel. He's the EU Head of Social Sectors at the EU Delegation in Malawi. Mr. Kimer. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I mean, it's a great honor actually to be here today. Thank you for inviting the European Union to participate in this dialogue. Um, let me start saying that maybe I'm not the right person coming with so many paper, so much paper instead of a tablet. Maybe digitalization should be someone else talking about it. But anyway, I'll do my best. And yeah, I wanted to start. Uh, yeah, first of all, it's very, I was very happy to hear from the Honorable Minister making reference for, to so many of those actions that the government is pushing forward that we are working together on, whether it's in education, whether it's in electrification. And these are areas that we have a common uh, goal, common objective and that we want to achieve. Um, in it, specifically on digitalization, I just wanted to mention how important it is for the European Union. Digitalization is one of the priority of the, this European Commission, and this was before COVID. Of course, the COVID pandemic brought even more attention and, and brought em even more emphasis on how important digitalization is in our life. The way the European Union is looking at digitalization is uh, looking at digitalization that can work for people and work for businesses. And that's actually the way we intend digitalization, not as an end goal, but actually as a contributor, as an enabler to improve people's life, improve business opportunities, and improve society as a whole. We also see digitalization as a key enabler. And this, and, and this, for example, like one of the other main priorities of the European Union, climate neutrality, digitalization is clearly mentioned as one of those elements that actually will allow the, the European Union, its partners, its partners to achieve those goals. Now, when we go specifically on, on girls and, and the opportunities that are there from, from digitalization, I, went, I was reflecting actually a bit more preparing for this event uh, on how we could relate to the work that we do here in Malawi. And actually, I would say it's much easier to talk about the challenges. <laughs> I would have loved to be in the other group. <laughs> challenges are easier. We can, I mean, we have a list. Uh, when we have to spin it in a, in a bit nicer way and in a more positive way, it becomes a bit more complex. Because, of course, there are issues that are difficult to overcome. Uh, I think there were many, many, many mentioned, like uh, in the keynotes, opening remarks, and, 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 and Honorable Minister, how uh, the huge challenges that actually are in front of girls to take full advantage and full benefit of the, of the digital revolution and digitalization. Um, the way we are seeing, I mean, again, sorry, going back to the pandemic and what one of the positive that the pandemic brought, in my opinion, one of the few positive was finally to bring to, to the attention of everybody the issue of digital divide and the gender dimension of the digital divide. And it was clearly mentioned by, by my previous speakers. So looking at all these challenges, I think from here we can find opportunities. So addressing these challenges and you relying on digitalization also to address some of these challenges is one of those angles we are trying to use in Malawi to, to see, to put in practice digitalization. And for example, when we talk about girls and, and young women, how uh, digitalization can be a useful tool to enhance girls' rights, to increase awareness on key issues that concern girls, and ultimately to allow girls to take an informed decision about their life and actually take much better advantage of the opportunities that present. Uh, I was in preparation, there was an interesting note shared by Plan International about the ICT4D, I think is the name of the project that you're implementing. I found it really interesting. I think that's something that eventually, there's a WhatsApp platform where girls can actually share their, their concern and issues in, about sexual reproductive health and rights. And ultimately, they get an informed and competent feedback. I mean, this is already like a, an excellent way to turn an issue in an opportunity. On our side, we're doing a number of similar things, I would say, in other dimensions. I, I just want to mention some, not to say how good the, 
the European Union is doing, but actually just to give some ideas, there are positive coming and there are opportunities. Uh, there is a, one of the flagship programs we implement in Malawi is uh, the Spotlight program. Uh, we implement in partnership with the Ministry of Gender, of course, uh, with the Ministry of Local Government and the United Nations. Uh, and I'm happy UNICEF is also here as one of the partners. In that context, like digital solutions are explored to make sure girls can actually better address those challenges that prevent them actually to thrive as we would like to. So, for example, using uh, uh, mobile platforms to report issues related to gender-based violence. That's, a, that's already like a very powerful tool. Uh, similarly, victim support units, uh, digitalizing data collection and, uh, uh, re and reporting so that all the competent authorities can actually access and have a, a real-time information on how uh, of cases that are concerning the gender-based violence and that most of the time concern girls and young women. So these are just a couple of examples. I have much more on my main piece of papers, but now probably I, I don't want to go too long. Uh, and that we're eventually starting from a challenge, uh, digitalization can turn it into an opportunity. And I think that's, that's something that we should explore even more. And, and, and have a, probably a more structured approach toward the introduction of those, all these kind of uh, practices. Another area that we are very much looking at uh, and uh, in our work, uh, anyway, keeping us, I just want to, to make sure, that to reassure everyone that digitalization goes across the board in all European Union funded programs. But specifically, I'm relating to my work and the work of my team, uh, is how digitalization can be used in support to job creation and uh, um, employment and self-employment. This is one of the priorities of, of the current government, one of the priority of Malawi, one of the priority of all governments across the world and how digitalization can help uh, young people in accessing uh, better jobs uh, and, uh, and better relate to the world of work. Um, in this area, I think like uh, we're looking at different sides. On one side, we're really trying to level the play field introducing digitalization into education programs make the content of education more responsive to the needs of the young people vis-a-vis -vis digitalization is something that we tried in the past not sure how successful i would say but we can we definitely wanted to try even more and more in the future and the same and so our priorities in the country is working on secondary education but again this applies across the board basic education as well um, and so utilizing also digital solution in the education sector to make sure that girls can fill the gap that they currently have vis-a-vis -vis, uh, young boys is one of the, the, the things that we really want to try to make sure that at this level in the play field and creating a conducive environment for for digitalization to become an option also when talking about job creation and accessing jobs that imply an understanding of technology and understanding of uh, digital solution. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we work very much on technical education and vocational education because ultimately there, that, there is one of those venues where uh, young people and girls in the, in specifically can get acquainted can, and can be introduced to can familiarize with digital solutions and options. Uh, this is already starting. I think there, are, as I said, of course, there is need to level the play field. There is need to, to, to really empower girls to really more and more transition towards secondary education and access technical education and higher education. But ultimately, there are already experiences where girls are succeeding in, in um, entering into occupation that are uh, with a very high component of technology and innovation, for example. We have an example in, uh, uh, in Mzuzu, where the Mzuzu Technical College introduced in partnership with Seveta, and uh, that is a regulatory authority for uh, vocational education and training, and uh, the Minister of Labor introduced uh, um, specific courses on uh, uh, renewable, uh, renewable energy and specifically on photovoltaic. I mean, that's a, a training course that imply knowledge imply the use of technology imply innovation and digital, the use of digital solution and i was so happy to see that 37 percent of the uh, of the participant enrolled were actually female this is way above the, the average of uh, tibet enrollment from female girl, from girls in uh, in malawi so all this to say there are so from challenges we can turn it into opportunities and and actually try to build from there 
I would stop here. As I said, I, on my paper, I have many papers. I can go on and on, but I think you might have other questions or follow up. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. Indeed, digitization is a key enabler and for us girls to succeed. Now I want to hear from the young girls themselves. I will ask Belize from Malawi right here to give us a take on this discussion. All right, thank you very much. And thanks to all of you. Uh, I would love to agree with our duty bearers on what they're saying. Indeed, in this digitalization world, uh, being a girl is an opportunity. Like I can testify to that because uh, I've been like experienced the harassment and I would love to really commend uh, Pran International as well as other duty bearers like Kenneth Sarah and the government who helped me like as a refugee, like here in the Malawi. So uh, there are more opportunities like free education, scholarships for female. But uh, my concern is the, these uh, educations, uh, the education services like uh, online education services needs access to internet, which is a very big problem, like here in Malawi. Uh, internet, like especially in rural areas, like people are not able to access that because like of high, like the price, uh, or maybe to buy the credit, it's very expensive. Uh, my, uh, my other concern is, there is indeed access like in, in towns, uh, but now the, the, there is no protection to the data access for like young people, like girls. So I'd like to appeal our duty bearers if it's possible to uh, give like enforce data protection laws that will help like monitor the, the, the young people as well as the youth, especially young ladies. Uh, for those who do not have the, like, for those who do not have the access to the internet, I was still more, uh, uh, though you've said that there are like uh, te telecenters and cafes which are being established in the country, but to more, like, in more rural areas, like where I'm coming from, it's still like a problem. So I would like to ask if it's possible to be having at least like telecenters for girls and for everybody like to be able to access that. I would also love to give another issue of concern. We've been talking about equality, gender equality, and uh, well, probably gender-based violence. Most girls, yeah, like most organizations are really promoting the, this equality and girls are really proud of that and we are really grateful. But now the problem is our boys are being misinformed and they have the disinformation that uh, the world is going, is in favor of only girls. And the, mostly if we look on this issue, the problem is most girls are different from the way guys can be. So it's most girls are easily influenced and they are easily misled by the boys, our boys. So the, if they, uh, I would love to ask uh, the duty bearers to address us uh, or maybe provide like information, which we hope to, I don't know if uh, we can say sensitize or uh, teach boys on the true information both, I mean, both boys and girls, and the true information of the, this gender equality, because there, there is more to that. Like, if we take, if I can give an example, for example, like if we we think of our future generation and this equality, it's like we are instilling this spirit in boys who are naturally hard workers. Like, all opportunities are for girls, not for boys. So the boys now will be the ones coming, um, they can just make a decision like, let's impregnate these ladies. They shouldn't continue with their education. Or maybe they think of, if I make my own company, I will not employ ladies. Because more chances are now given to ladies, like a girl child, but we are not looked like upon. 
so most boys are, have, are growing up with this spirit, like this equality is favoring more girls than boys, and they have the misinformation about this. So I would love the duty bearers to give proper information on the, this gender equality so that our boys, like boys, since they're the ones who influence more and they're the ones who, who work hard, should be aware of what's really happening. Another thing is the challenge can be also like the carpet to like interviews may increase. We have this problem like with uh, maybe in the organization we hear even in schools, like maybe for a girl child, for you to access some opportunities, you need to give something in return. So if this misinformation continues like for boys, I believe there will be more problems than we have ever thought will be. So I would love uh, our duty bearers to address us on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Belize. Now can I ask upon uh, Maria from Namibia and Michelle Nganga from Namibia as well to give us their input on this. Please let's limit uh, our contributions to two minutes each. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> thank you. My name is Michelle Wanjiro. I'm from Kenya. Um, the first thing is we can create online platforms. Michelle from Namibia, can you hear us? Yes. He's joining us online. Hello? We can hear you. Um, uh, there are many platforms where these girls can actually do things that they that because most people in uh, rural areas have a thought of the specific things girls can do and boys can't. Uh, which, which um, this this girls get this discrimination, and I think it will be best with online platforms to actually um, help to educate the community at large that these girls can actually through online platforms learn to do a lot of uh, things. Because okay. uh, there are many, there are many girls Michelle who Michelle is offline. She's not online. No, okay. She's online. I um, think you are the ones who not can hear us. I'm going to ask Madam Mary Jirima to give us her input on this while we wait for Michelle. Okay. What are the opportunities in the digital world for girls and young women? Thank you. Um, the opportunities for girls and young women range over quite a number of areas. In terms of education, we find that a lot of girls have what we call duty of care. to education while she's at home. Education doesn't have to be in a, in, a, in a classroom somewhere. So even if she's limited because of duty of care, she can access different platforms and follow lessons online. The pandemic has highlighted this. Unfortunately, for most of our rural girls, as she has said here, there's not a lot of internet access. So they are unable to take advantage of these platforms and learn. But uh, in the ed education sp uh, space, I think access allows girls to attain a much, much better education, and they're not limited to what is being offered in their country. They can access education from anywhere in the world, as long as the language barrier is not there. In terms of health, because of our culture, a lot of questions that girls might have about their sexual and reproductive health, they can't ask. But with access online, they're able to get the information themselves. 
I know a lot of us nowadays, if we're sick, the first thing we do is Google our symptoms on online. <laughs> and half the time the results are scary. But it does give us an opportunity for better health because we are empowered with knowledge and we understand our bodies more. In terms of socialization, the internet or the digital platforms allow us to have access to a platform where our views can be heard. We can talk politics, we can discuss anything, we can share business ideas. A lot of people are learning new things that they didn't know just because they can access YouTube videos. So I think that there's a lot, there's a realm, a, a realm of information that girls and just children in general can access online if we empower them with the tools to, to reach it. But of course, um, even for politicians, it's an opportunity for girls to explore their political views and to be able to speak freely online where they can't freak, speak, speak freely in their communities, they can have that opportunity to converse online. But unfortunately, as we had said, there's a lot of violence online, girls are made to feel inferior, and girls are scared to express themselves. So it's up to us to make sure that these platforms are safe and they're conducive for girls to participate. In terms of businesses, I'm a business person. Half of my business is done online. So girls have that opportunity to access business ideas or business platforms to sell their, uh, their uh, products. And even if it's just an idea, I was watching um, this young man, I forget his name, I don't know if it's coming, but he's on TikTok. And all he does is point out obvious things. He never says a word, but he's very famous. I'm sure the younger generation will know who I'm talking about. He, like, he makes that expression. And uh, he's famous now. He's got millions and millions of followers just because he has access to an online platform that al allowed him to uh, showcase his talent. So the opportunities are vast. <laughs> we just have to empower girls with the tools and ensure that they can play on these platforms. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Mary Um Just checking if Michelle is still available online. Uh, check, yes. Can you help us? Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Um, one of the things that a girl can be able to do through the online platform is uh, learn new things because in some communities, people have <clears throat> this perception that girls have to do specific things and boys have to do specific things, which um, some girls, like they've been enclosed to a specific thing which they're not very interested in. So these online platforms can be able to teach these girls to like things that they want to do, the, the people they want to be in future. Uh, another thing is also these girls can be able to create awareness on their rights and teach the community that I can do this and this person can do this. And it doesn't matter whether I'm a boy or I'm a girl, I can do anything that <clears throat> I want to be. Uh, another thing is we should, the, the community and the country I live in, Kenya, most of the places are slums. So they don't have internet connection. They're not able to go through these online platforms. And the only way they're able is through our schools. And during this COVID period, they haven't been able. So even through uh, news, because most the the some there's some places where there's a specific station someone can go to and watch the news where this like our country Kenya we can be able to actually use these uh, channels to be able to initiate this stuff that these girls can be able to do and actually educate them because during this COVID period um, these channels were offering online education 
uh, where you can just tune in and listen and be able to learn. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Um, now, moving on to the second part of our, of our round table discussion, um, I'll hand over to my co moderator, Ali, Ali Kibundu from Uganda. He's going to take us through the second part of this discussion. Uh, yes, thank you very much. My name is Ali, for those who don't know me. And I would like to also slowly by slowly pass this information that the settings for the meet for this meeting only panelists have access to audio and video but you can interact using the chat and q a section of the platform yeah once again you're most welcome everyone who is on this virtual meeting i would like slowly by slowly to ali. invite them. yes excuse me ali yes can you hear me yeah, I can hear you. Can you hold it for a while? We need to release the other panelists. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Madam, Your Honor, please stay, stay back because we'll need you for the second uh, discussion that Honorable Gospel Kazako and Mr. Michelle, you may proceed to your seats. All right, so we're moving on to the second part of our panel discussion. And for this one, Ali Kigundu from Uganda will be the moderator. Ali is a member of the High Sound Ugandan Child Organization. This is a child-led organization and it advocates for rights of children online. So Ali, I would ask you to please make sure you maintain time. And uh, for this one, would I'll request Ms. Martha Chizuma, SCB Director, to please come on the podium and be part of our panelists. And also, joining online is um, Facebook Safety Policy Manager for Africa, Middle East, and Turkey, Suzanne El Said. And the other two girls that will be joining in online, Stacy from Uganda and Naleli from Lesotho. Thank you. Over to you, Ali. Okay, thank you very much, everyone who is on this virtual meeting. And I would like to not waste any time and start with the first start with the first participant who will be Maria from Namibia and Belesi from Malawi. Yes. I would like to call upon those two participants to come forward and uh, give out your points. Maria from Namibia and Belesi from Malawi. Um, the second question that we're tackling in this discussion is what are the challenges that face girls and young women in the digital space? So, I think Ali, uh, the first one who's going to tackle this is uh, Madam Martha Jizuma. Can you please tackle this? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think for, to, to avoid just repeating what everyone has said, um, with that question, I'm just, in my mind, I've got a, the young lady, say, in Chitipa. Uh, she's in uh, Form 2. So much as, as it's a fact, uh, and it's, it has already been said, that technology use and digital transformation have become a norm, part of our lives um, at, at, at the moment. Um, the issue of uh, that girl in Shitipa being able to 
access um, uh, digital services um, for the fact that she, she or her parents may not have uh, enough resources to get her a phone or a tablet uh, to use. That is a challenge. But also there could be some social, cultural and gendered norms um, that would affect uh, that young girl um, in Shitipa that would not allow her. So even if probably her parents could afford, but probably the social cultural norms uh, may not allow her to, to access the digital services. Um, but also the issue of the lack of necessary education and the necessary digital skills uh, for, for, for that young girl uh, to be able to know what exactly to look for um, in, in the digital space, something that will be useful uh, to her life. Uh, that will also be a challenge. And as the uh, Honorable Shirema has also said, the safety of that digital space um, is also a challenge. So one could have, one could be allowed to have digital services and could have the means to get the digital services that once she is in that digital space, then she's subjected to all sorts of uh, bullying um, uh, that comes in many different in different forms and shapes. So um, these are some of the challenges uh, that I believe a girl child uh, is exposed to in, a, in as far as digital space is concerned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just a reminder, Ali, we're doing part two of the roundtable discussion. Over to you, Ali. Okay, thank you, everyone. And for round two, yeah, sorry for that. Sorry, I would like to. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, thank you, Michael Moderator, for reminding me. For round two, I think I'll first call upon the two participants and after I will announce the question to all of them. This would be Stacy from Uganda and Nelly Neleli from Lesotho. I think it would be better then after to announce the questions, which is what are the challenges that first girls and young women in digital space this should be Facebook and TikTok. Yes, Stacy from Uganda and Neleli from Lesotho. Hello there, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, Malawi, can you hear me too? Okay, my name is Stacy Mary Paula. I come from High School for Children, Uganda. It's a media club that is led by children. Um, today, I'm here to tackle um, about the challenges girls and young women face in the digital space. Um, well, a lot, of, a lot has been said, a lot has been um, presented by ministers in Malawi. And just my concern, there is um, some honorable minister that said um, that, okay, in her words, she said that why should girls um, allow boys to take pictures of, uh, like nude pictures of them and then post them? I just want to kindly um, to inform her that as we all know, um, girls are exposed to the most severe forms of online assault. And in, uh, when I talk of online assault, um, it all goes down to rap videos, extortion, doxing with the intent to harm them. Like girls are also victims of non-consensual pornography, stalking. So whatever is happening to the girls, it's not, it's not like then they are aware of this. It's not out of their knowledge or concern. They do not allow anything that happens to them online when it comes to uh, maybe cyber violence. Um, someone can say why what can can say why should why should girls like be all over there saying we are facing online assault and all that stuff? Who told her to post that pic? You understand? Let's remember, it's not the girls' fault, really. It's not it's not the girls' fault. It's the 
it's the fault of those people who come and comment mean stuff. And then moving on to my next point, yes, I will talk on behalf of rural, rural, rural girls out there. They do not have access to the internet. I'm pleased with the Malawi government that for them, they have managed to introduce the free zones of Wi-Fi, I mean, host hotspotting. And this is my humble request to the president of Malawi and the vice president, because for you, you are friends with our president. I believe you can talk to them. We do not have any free zone, I'm telling you. And, and you know, internet is very expensive. Please talk to our president. Like they introduced some bit of free zones, like for you, because for me right now, I'm admiring you guys. Thank you so much that I submit. Yes, thank you so much, Stacy. And on, on top of that, I would like to say that maybe this should be worked upon that some girls are kindly and uh, are not that experienced. So maybe they are forced to take pics. And after when they see the, those pics on those network, as in social media platforms, they are surprised and they and they are confused. How did that go there? So I think that's what i could you know conclude with so on top of that i would like to call upon naleli from lesotho to also to speak out her points about question two naleli from lesotho Let's give a chance to Maria. Let's give a chance to Maria. Okay. Maria. Namibia. Maria, if you can hear me from Namibia. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Maria, you can speak up now. Um, yes. Namibia. Okay. Yes, you can speak up. Um. So our first point is to educate girls equally, um, which means that it's, it's to push the digital technology, education and activity support and promote girls' participation in related subjects. And also to, to help ensure that they have equal access to opportunities in their workshops of the future. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, secondly, it closes the tech access and usage gap. Girls might be reluctant to access computer classes and internet cafes because these spaces are dominated by men or they are located in places that are not accessible to women. Okay. Um, the third one is make digital environment safe for girls, which means that the digital world reflects the diversity of physical world and girls experience many of the same forms of violence, harassment and abuse online as they do elsewhere. Yeah. Much of the te technology, I'm sorry, um, lastly, empower girls and women to create digital technology. Much of the technology and digital content we use today has been designed and developed by men. But research has shown that women and girls often use technology and digital tools in different ways to boys and men. And therefore, their needs are also likely to be different. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Maria from the Namibia. And Sorry, but I couldn't hear some of the words, but mostly I had equal education that in this era of, you know, of digital as in a COVID pandemic, most of the girls in rural areas didn't get the, as in the equal education that they didn't have the devices to study on Zoom and yet most of the countries were on lockdown. So I think that was the major point I had. So, so I couldn't hear most of the points because the way, you know, the network was unstable. But with those few remarks, I would like to 
take back the mic to my co-moderator. Hey, Ali. Yes. I have some other two to put across. I thought my colleague would say them, but probably she never said them. Okay, so Stacy can also add some few points. Yes, Stacy. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, well, to add on the challenges girls are facing in the digital space, I mean, girls and young women, I want uh, to say to watch about. 22% of girls have received and abusive comments. Uh, like, 22% of the girls have received abusive comments on a status or photo they have posted compared to 18% of the boys. I find this unfair. Yes, and next, 23% of the girls have left, have felt harassed by someone contacting them regularly on most especially social media like Facebook compared to 13% of the boys. And this one sometimes even moves from online to offline while these people go on and stalk this girl and kidnap them and force them to do some things like non-consensual pornography, like rap videos, like sex videos, which is my other concern. And my other thing is that due to the pressure girls are facing online, they are also more likely to be pressured into sending photos which are then shared and to find themselves criticized rather than those people who post the images without their consent or knowledge. And my other thing is girls, um, okay, 13% of the girls, um, according to my research that I've made, 13% of the girls have stopped going on digital platforms, like maybe social media, to avoid negative responses. They're, actually, girls are not even entitled to their opinions because they are afraid of being criticized. Like, how do I say this? Okay, they are afraid of negative responses. They are removing themselves from the digital space altogether, either by their own choice or because their parents and teachers believe it's the best option for them to stay safe. Thank you so much, Stacey Pola from High Sound for Children Uganda. I submit. Thank you, Paula. Yeah, right. with, with a little summary, I think what Paula meant specifically that these girls are inevitably kidnapped and forced to take pictures of their nudes and later posted on social media platforms. And that's how their nudes get on those platforms. But I, they, she doesn't think that, and neither do I, that they post their pics with with their concern, as in when they like it. Okay, so with those uh, with those few remarks, I would like to handle the mic back to my co-moderator, Elizabeth. Co-moderator, Elizabeth. So, sorry, Malumbo. Co-moderator Malumbo. Thank you very much, Ali. Um, yeah. Right now, I would like to call upon Suzanne El Sayed. Uh, Suzanne is the Facebook Safety Policy Manager of Africa, Middle East, and Turkey. Uh, we'd like Suzanne to give us an insight on the challenges that girls are facing and young women in the digital space. Suzanne, over to you. Hi, good, good afternoon, everyone. I just want to check if you can hear me clearly. Yeah. I will take that as a yes. Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting us today. And um, I'd like to thank Honorable Madam Mary Chalima, Honorable Sarah Anyang, Agbor, and Dr. Patricia Koyati, and really appreciate all of the comments that were coming towards social media and also the comments from the young girls. Um, and this is something that we really take very seriously at Facebook. Um, and before before I continue, I just would like to address two overlapping aspects that we cover at Facebook, and those are just one of many, two of many, um, and that is child safety and also women's safety. So, of course, we're discussing the issues, and 
Um, this is something that we, of course, continue to research on, continue to try to tackle. Um, and, and on the 5th of October 2020, the UK newspaper, The Guardian, covered a survey by Plan International, actually, which found that more than half of the 15 to 20, 25 year olds across 20 countries said that they had been cyber stalked, sent explicit messages and images, or abused online. Um, and 20% of the girls said they had been forced off social media due to online violence. And for us, one is too many. Um, and that's why at Facebook, from a child safety perspective, and that's 13 years uh, old and above, our work on child safety has spent over uh, a decade. And in our industry leading efforts to combat child exploitation focus on preventing abuse from the get go, uh, detecting and then reporting content that violates our policies. Um, and that's why working with experts and authorities to keep children safe. Now, at Facebook, is our job is to empower people, to build stronger communities, empower people to find meaningful connections online, especially women and young girls, and empower people to build a community they can rely on. As many of the speakers have said that this is a good space to express themselves, exp the young girls are able to express themselves on their social causes that they support, their concerns, uh, or even political uh, stances. And also this community can help them thrive in these increasingly disconnected times. Well, the best way we can do that is that to create policies, but also build technology that can not only address content that shouldn't be, um, that shouldn't be there, but that empowers people to help them uh, to help them in time of their personal need. And that's why we want to, uh, we want Facebook to be a safe space for people to express themselves. And that's why we have our community standards that um, all users must abide by to prevent hate speech and other harmful content. And one thing that we really stress on and we partner with so many organizations such as Plan International and Matoto News is to really stress on that every single content or every piece of content on Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp can be reported to our safety and security team 24 seven. And we have them available, 20, 35,000 of them are recruited under safety and security in order to review the content that's been re uh, reported and also to um, respond to them. From a woman's side, uh, from a women's safety perspective, is that at Facebook we believe that women and young women should have equal access to all of the economic opportunity, education, and social connection the internet provides. Like um, the Honorable Madam Mary Chalima, she mentioned um, the famous TikTok star that uh, that has now economic opportunities through. Um, through his TikTok account, and that is exactly what we're discussing here through Instagram and Facebook also, that the economic opportunities that are available um, and that we try to also help women to, through different programs and initiatives to be able to access those opportunities. And specifically, as some of the young girls, they mentioned that um, the technology was built by men and sometimes the women's voice is not considered and that's why it does not, it's not able to take into consideration what women face. And that is absolutely correct. And that's why through our safety, for, uh, our safety five point approach, we, one of the first things are partnerships, because we understand we're not experts in everything. And we require partnership specifically in, in, in specific countries, not only the US, not only the UK, no, in country partnerships across the regions across different countries in, all, in order to be able to take a comprehensive approach to make sure that the platform is a safer space for women, including writing clearer policies and developing cutting edge technology to help prevent abuse happening in the first place. Um, our community standards uh, include rules against behaviors that disproportionately impact women, such as the sharing of non consensual uh, intimate imagery which is illegal in many places around the world. They also include rules against harassment, like sending multiple unwanted messages to a, person's, uh, to a person who's made it clear they don't want to be contacted and to receive it. But also we have developed safety features in order to protect any victims. And we've also developed 
safety resources that is also uh, applicable for different countries in case the victims faces any harm or any um, uh, any uh, faces any abuser, they're able to con connect with those um, safety partners that we have on our safety resources, which is available at facebook.com forward slash safety. And this is different resources that are available. And specifically, we have a huge resource center for women's safety specifically, whether it's women in politics or women uh, that are facing gender-based violence or also community leaders. And another point to um, cover with regards to non-consensual intimate uh, sharing of intimate imagery is that because cultural norms around things like sexuality, friendships, and women's roles in society can differ so widely, conversations with global experts okay. help us understand how abuse and harassment manifest differently in different places. For example, in the U.S., a harasser might share, might select a nude photo or a video of the woman engaging in a sexual activity, we, re we would remove the image according to our standards on the sexual exploitation of adults. In some countries, a woman could be shamed or put at risk if someone shared a photo of her ankle or a photo of her walking with a man who isn't a family member. If someone shares this in any way that makes it clear they're trying to humiliate her, that would fall under our standards on bullying and harassment. We're also investing Take, uh, in technology that can find uh, violating content proactively and in some cases prevent it from being shared in the first place. So in 2017, we launched a pilot program to help uh, potential victims uh, prevent their intimate images from appearing on Facebook and um, Instagram without their consent. We have also developed, uh, um, we have also developed uh, a machine learning and artificial intelligence techniques to proactively detect nude or near nude images and videos shared without their permission, without anyone having to report them. So they're removed immediately. Also, blocking and reporting and other user facing tools are only part of the solution, and their success relies on people knowing to seek them out and understanding how to use them, plus feeling comfortable enough to use them. And that's why we partner with a lot of organizations across sub-Saharan Africa, but also across the world in order to spread the awareness of the reporting mechanism and also the other user uh, features that we have, such as ignore in messaging uh, in messengers. Um, a victim who's already feeling uh, anxious or threatened may not want to trigger the, uh, the harasser for a fear of a retribution. And that's why we try to make sure, that's why Facebook is not only investing in digital literacy programs, and improved safety resources, but we're also investing in technology that can find violating content proactively, and in some cases prevent it again from being shared um, in the first place. Um, lastly, is that we want to make sure that victims and their allies also report violating behavior, and we will remove anything that doesn't follow our policies. So please, um, something that we like to stress on is that please do report any content that you think is inappropriate and that you uh, that you feel is inappropriate. You can also report it on behalf of someone else. And just so you know, reporting mechanisms is completely anonymous. And the other uh, person who you're, the, the harasser, will not be notified that you have reported them and this will be kept confidential. Thank you. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Um, I hope you continue working towards making the internet, Facebook, safe for girls and young women. Um, right now, I would like to ask Madam Mary Chima to input anything if she has. To. I was, I was asked to summarize at the end, so I'll do that. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This marks the end of our discussion, part two of our panel discussion. Thank you very much to our panelists and to our audience as well, online and physically here. Thank you.
Uh, Your Honor, you may take your seat. You will not be involved in the last uh, panel discussion. Yeah. So we're now moving on to our last part of the panel discussion. And uh, with this one, part three says, uh, where the question is, what can be done to help girls and young women overcome the challenges? Prior, we were discussing the challenges that young women and girls first online. So we are now coming to the resolutions part. And the moderator for this session will be Malumbo Banda. She will be joined by um, co-founder and managing director of Akila Chicks, uh, Akila Chicks, Grace Takambenji Malela. Sorry, I'll come, I'll come again. Um, she will be joined by the tech expert, Linda Kamau, co-founder of co-founder and managing director of Akila Chicks, and Grace Takambenji Malela, ombudsman from Malawi, and two other girls from Malawi, Yewo and, Do and Devin, and I think Noreen from Uganda. Are they joining us online? Yes. Yewo, can you give me a shout if you're online? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, sure, yeah. So Yeo and Devin and Noreen from Uganda. In the interest of time, I would like you to please quickly come forward. Thank you. Over to you, Malumbo. Thank you very much, Michelle. Um, the last question that we're tackling in this roundtable discussion is: We've been discussing in, in the in the previous part of the dis, of the roundtable discussion on the challenges that girls face, but right now we would like to to have solutions. What can be done to help girls and young women overcome the challenges? First to tackle this is the tech expert, Linda Kamau, who is the co-founder and managing director of Akila Chicks. Over to you, Linda. Thank you so much. Uh, and to everyone who've uh, spoken ahead of me uh, in attending um, this uh, amazing event. Um, and also thank you for the invitation uh, to be joining you today. Um, yeah, I think um, I've been, I'm a tech engineer myself, a uh, software engineer by profession, uh, a software engineer turned entrepreneur and focusing on pretty much uh, building uh, the largest workforce of African female uh, tech talent. Um, and I do this uh, with the organization Akira Chicks um, that's been there for the last 11 years, based in Kenya. Uh, we do this through a flagship uh, program that's called Code Hive that focuses on training young women from uh, low-income backgrounds or underserved backgrounds uh, with technology skills up uh, market-driven pretty much technology skills that they are able to use to actually secure uh, employment in the, in the booming tech industry in the African continent. Um, so for us to be able to uh, start uh, solving the problem of uh, women and young girls inclusion in the tech industry, we need to actually focus on creating opportunities for them. Um, I always say that brilliance is evenly distributed, but opportunities are not. It means that we have very many young women and girls that are really smart coming out of school, from primary school to high school. But then by the time they're leaving high school, the opportunities out there for them to get the skills they need uh, to be able to thrive uh, I mean, they, most of the time they are not, they don't have those opportunities. And so when I say creating those opportunities, it means that we need to make sure that we are encouraging young women to get into science, uh, especially when they are in high school, into science and technology, engineering and mathematics, and uh, now adding in the arts. Uh, we need to start encouraging them, but not just by talking, but also by doing. Uh, we've seen lots of, uh, before COVID, uh, we used to, COVID, we used to run sessions in, in high schools, 
And the goal of these sessions was to um, introduce young women in tech. Um, and so they, they used to run clubs in high schools, for instance, in Kenya and at the Kenya High. And we meant that we were actually teaching the young women how to code. We were introducing them to software engineering as early as uh, the Inform 3 or Inform 2 uh, to start showing them what opportunities exist in their, uh, for them uh, in terms of careers and not just the mainstream, uh, you know, normal doctor, teacher, but then even software engineering as, an, as a career path. And what we've seen that does to the young women is that it opens up a very different world. And so they start exploring that and when they get into university or into college or into boot camps like Akiratix, they are able to actually grasp really the, the grasp the, uh, the, the the teachings really well uh, and end up being some of the best female software engineers we've seen in the African continent. We've seen the uptick, uh, especially when it comes to the tech industry. Uh, we know that women are more uh, they have more attention to detail. They they actually learn really well and can actually uh, execute really well compared to the men. And their attention, uh, the lifespan of them in terms of attention to detail is very, um, is very key in terms of, um, you know, they're very keen to actually uh, uh, being able to do stuff and like include good building solutions. And so I believe that if we can get more women or young girls actually introduced to STEM as early as possible, then we'll start seeing a shift when it comes to the tech, uh, the career paths in tech, uh, being able to pick up, uh, you know, like going to university and being able to take up a course in computer science or being able to take up a course in, you know, like uh, engineering, uh, even if it's electrical or, or, or any other kind of engineering. So if we can expose to the young women early, then it means that we can see more of them transitioning into the STEM field. When I look back um, and at the work that we've been doing at Akira Chicks, um, through our Code Hive program, we've seen young people from very uh, underserved backgrounds, you know, from as many rural areas, not just city kids, uh, from people from outside of the city, from people in uh, Kakuma refugee camp, from people in some of the most arid areas uh, in, uh, in parts of Kenya, or some of the most rural areas in Uganda, uh, or, in, or in Rwanda, being able to access, just get this opportunity to join uh, this amazing program that is called Hive. And once they join, they expose, they see their world in a very different angle. And by the time they're graduating, they're looking at themselves and real and, and, and appreciating the work that they've done, just not for themselves, but they're for their own families. I think we know, and this is a saying that I think all of us as Africans love to use, is when you educate a girl, you educate the whole community or you educate the village. So it means that most of our girls that graduate from the Kodai program are able to earn an income because they secure jobs in the tech industry and then be able to start supporting their families. So if it's that young woman who their sibling was struggling to get school fees, it means now because she has a job and an income, so she's able to support her, her siblings to actually have uh, go to school continuously without being chased away. And with time, then we start seeing them being able to support their parents, including even starts opening up uh, maybe you know little shops for their part for their mom to just run and not stay at home idle. And what that happens is that we start seeing young women taking up leadership in just not for themselves, but in their households, which is pretty much uh, pushing now uh, to see that we start seeing more more families thriving because of this young woman who just came to Akira Chicks for one year and was able to acquire these skills and, and be able to actually secure a job in the tech industry and, and, and earn an income. So I think the more opportunities we can create for the young women, then, then we'll be starting to solve the, uh, the, the issues or the problems that we've had uh, shared today. Yeah, so I'll end there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Linda, uh, right now I'll ask the Ombudsman of Malawi government, Madam Grace Takambenji Malela, to give us our input on this. Thank you, Marumbo. Um, her owner, Madam Mary Chirima, and all protocols are observed. I think I was invited to try and be part of the solution to the, the challenges that um, our girls face, what can be done to help 
women and girls overcome the challenges. Um, my first point in that regard would be the issue of awareness. I'm looking at uh, the non-government organizations and um, a number of other service providers under the leadership of the Minister of Gender. How much information is going out there to raise awareness, to create awareness, not just awareness that imparts information, that when you see this, this is cyberbullying, but awareness that actually tells them what to do and how is that connected to the service providers so that for the young girl, for the woman that goes to a particular service provider, they actually know what to expect, the kind of service, and that service is actually provided for. And how is government also working around the referral pathways? We know a lot of cases that have died at the reporting door, in this case, the police service, around issues of cyberbullying. So how are we connected as uh, service providers? So awareness that gives people information and actually empowers them to want to take action and the responsiveness of the service providers. We need to keep working on this. We also need a lot of legal literacy. If I don't know that what I'm being subjected to is a crime, I'll continue suffering in ignorance. There's so many crimes that we are committing as we are using Facebook and Instagram every day. I'll cite some of the crimes, child pornography, there is pro prohibition of uh, cyber harassment, prohibition of offensive communication, prohibition of cyber stalking. I don't know how many of us are victims of cyber stalking. And maybe we don't know the form or, or locale that it takes, and therefore we are not able to report. So if we can invest in legal literacy, let this information be known, and then people will want to take action when they face these crimes. This should complement the digital literacy that we are working around. The second one, which is very paramount for me, is law enforcement. Honorable Minister of Information, I think when um, he was making his remarks, he made reference to the litany of laws that this country has enacted. For me, when I come to a podium, I think I come with the message that we've got enough laws Let's not spend any further quatches on enacting. Let's focus on enforcement. For purposes of this conversation, if we are really serious about this issue, if we enforce maybe even just half of the Gender Equality Act, the Child Care Protection and Justice Act, the Electronic Transactions and Cyber Security Act, the Trafficking in Persons Act, the HIV and AIDS prevention and management, and more importantly, the constitution, I think would make a lot of headway. So how do we put all our efforts and interventions in ensuring that there is effective enforcement of our laws? Um, other attendant uh, propositions that I would make would be to move towards the systems approach and work with synergistic partnerships. I'm looking at colleagues from the Minister of Education that have come here, Minister of Information, Minister of Health, um, Minister of Gender. How much of our programming is collaborated beyond these commemoration events? Because when you look at this issue of uh, girls being free online, as um, her owner, Madam Mary Chirima, alluded to, I think it's got a lot of interconnectedness among its different ministries. From where I'm sitting, I see a whole lot of room for improvement in terms of um, collaborative and coordinated programming over an issue that, that cuts across a number of ministries. And uh, finally, the financing, where you have competing priorities. So today we are commending um, government uh, through the relevant ministry for starting the free Wi-Fi zones. But how do we scale up? How do we ensure that there's sustained financing so that the other girl that are honorable uh, Director General for Anti-Corruption Bureau referred to in Chitipa and Halile can also point at a free Wi-Fi zone 
and be able to use that. So how do we move from the famous word that we like to use, piloting, and how do we just take to scale critical interventions such as this and ensure that there is uh, inclusion and that we are not leaving anyone behind. I think with these uh, five critical points, we are going to ensure that the digital revolution that um, Madam Mary Shirima referred to becomes a blessing and not a curse. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. Right now, I would like to ask you to give us our input on this. Thank you, Malumbo. We would just like the digital literature should be taught at schools so that learners should be able to learn about it, the internet and must be able to know what is is. People who are finding this and making news, they must be punished this every year so that people should learn and take a lesson that sending fake news is really bad. Facebook and other social media platforms should be strengthening their report system so that fake information should not be shared easily. A lot of girls are afraid to go to social media because they are afraid that they will get bullied because usually a lot of girls are bullied because how they look and what they say. Maybe if they say the broken English only, maybe social media, they may be laughed at and maybe saying mean things that may be able to hurt them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yo. Divine, take this up. Thank you, Malumbo. Um, thank you very much for everyone who is in the room. Once again, my name is Divine. Um, a lot have been mentioned on um, uh, how can, what are the solutions that uh, we can help to overcome the challenges that women and girls are facing. Uh, my colleague, Aria Belize, uh, mentioned something about uh, enforcing enforcing on data uh, uh, protection. Allow me to come on that, to come back on that as well. Uh, so um, by the look of the things uh, here in Malawi, we don't really have the, the data protection, uh, which uh, now allows people to share information how they want, how they feel like, because no one is protecting them. And then by the end of the day, uh, no one is punishing them which is why they are able and they are free to share false information, which also by the end of the day, majority of the people who are being affected are girls. So uh, I would love to request the government to look into that on how they, they can enforce the, the protection on data. And then um, once again, uh, the other point is that the young people should have access to information but how can they uh, have the access to information? Um, out of the 19, 19,754,807 uh, people, population of Malawi, only 14% of the population have access to internet, which uh, means they maybe have access to smartphones or yeah, to, to the internet. But then when we also look at it, uh, it could be 99% of the people who have access to internet are from the urban areas. But then how about the people in the rural areas? How are we making sure that uh, they are not getting wrong information? Uh, and how can we have it accessible to them? How can they have the access to information? Um, this is when um, I was thinking if the government could uh, introduce the internet caps in the rural areas that can be accessible to young people and most of them can be girls but then when i was thinking this uh, area i heard someone um, saying that of course the government can uh, push forward having the internet caps in the rural areas and maybe promoting digital literacy in primary schools secondary schools but then the challenge still comes in uh, to say that um, there's a high data cost. And then maybe if the government is pushing into that, the data cost still remains uh, the challenge. But then I was also thinking, why is it that um, 
the same government can't come in to talk to these service providers, maybe we talk of Airtel and TNM, to reduce the data cost so that it could be accessible to everyone. Because um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we cannot keep on losing young people and definitely young leaders simply because they're not having um, access to internet and the main challenge is the, the data cost. And yet uh, these people, this service provided using um, advice uh, at a younger age, it's ruining their mind. But then this is where now the, the, the same children feels like it's where they can be getting uh, more information online. Yet uh, the same information they are, uh, see, uh, they are looking for, it appears that uh, majority of them are wrong information they are getting. So if the parents now can't uh, sit down their children and then educate them, because it's also hard to stop them uh, having access to the, to, to the devices or to the internet. So it's good that to prevent any uh, uh, consequences that can come after to educate them on how they can uh, be using these uh, online platforms as well as uh, the, how they can be able to prevent them. So um, last, last one that I would love to share in this room, it's, um, it's good that Her Excellency Second Lady Mary Chirima is in the room, uh, is that, well, um, I'm from Daleka refugee camp, and then this issue is connected to uh, it could be to data, uh, to not having the self-protection to data connection. Well, I'll give an example whereby, because um, we are talking on how misinformation and disinformation is affecting girls. Uh, last uh, few months ago, we had, uh, we had issues whereby um, the government told uh, all refugees who are in, in, the, in towns to move back in the refugee camp so that they could have legal documents to allow them to work uh, around in Malawi. But then uh, the information, the most information that people were getting online were that um, the Malawi government is chasing out uh, refugees, Malawi government uh, is closing up the camp. So this affected girls in a sense that uh, most of them had lost hope because they were like, okay, we freed our countries, we are here, and then Malawi is Malawi government do not need us anymore. They are closing the camp. So what do we do? So a um, majority of them ended up getting married maybe to citizens, which wasn't their dream to get married at an early age. They gave up on their educations because they were like, why do we need to keep up, uh, to keep going with education? Yet the camp is closed and then um, we have no future at all. So um, looking at it, it was uh, simply because of the misinformation and disinformation because literally that wasn't the information or that wasn't the aim of uh, the government telling people to settle back in the camp but then simply because now the people have access to these uh, online pro platforms they can use it use them whatever however they want they can share any information and people are getting them maybe they do not have knowledge on how to follow up if the information is real or is wrong so that's when um a lot of people and mostly girls are being victims on how these informations are being shared online. So I would love the government to look, to look into that as well, because I'm expressing this as a concern as, and as someone who's representing the refugee camp. Thank you. Thank you very much, Divine. This marks the end of our roundtable discussion. Just to echo on what uh, the ombudsman said, we're aging social media companies and internet companies to shift from a design by profit to design by safety to make the internet safe for girls. And we're also asking Honorable Gospel Kazaku that data bundles must fall, please. Hashtag I hope when you get uh, into the office tomorrow, this is the first thing that you're going to start enforcing. Um, just to thank all uh, the panelists that were in the roundtable discussion. Oh, I'm just being reminded that we have someone who is joining online. 
And that is Noreen from Uganda. Noreen, are you available to give us input? Um, yes, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, my name is Noreen Fatma Alexandria. And, um, I'm from the High South for Children, Uganda. So the question was saying that how can these challenges be overcome? So first of all, we all know that the challenges include cyberbullying, harassment, and, and also more. So there is also this problem of predators. Predators are people that come online, particularly targeting the girls sexually. So um, how can this be overcome? So I'm thinking that maybe we can, let's talk to these girls like we we don't leave everything online let's first talk to them how to that's i think this is the point of awareness yes let's talk to these girls how to react um let's tell them what to expect so that when they when they have it there they don't feel so down and then they don't lose confidence yes yeah, so let's talk to them and also as they're on these social media platforms let them um let them have parental control like let, let the parents help them navigate themselves around the social media platforms like because when you're on social media there are some things that you click knowingly and unknowingly so but when you're uh, with a big person or with a person that understands this more than you <laughs> when you're with a person that understands this more than you, and that person can direct you yeah. So, and the the third point is that we also involve boys in this to that, in that these boys don't like they don't overdo it. I mean, they don't they don't oversee the girls in that they they are who's be put into practice. Let, of course, the laws are there, but then they're not followed because everyone knows that what they do is wrong, like harassing someone is wrong, but then this and let them put the laws into practice so that people can also get to fear that when i'm doing this this is wrong this is going to come this is going to come in for me if i've done this yes thank you i think these are my points thank you so much thank you very much noreen um, this marks the end of our roundtable discussion we're urging government to incorporate digital literacy in our curriculum to make the world a better place and to make the Malawi, uh, to make Malawian girls to be able to identify misinformation and disinformation. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this marks the end of our panel discussion. Thank you for all the participants that joined in online and those that physically joined in. Uh, just keynote points that I noted when the panelists were discussing. The Minister of Information did mention of the MERAP, the Rural Electrification Program, and how it is being implemented in different rural areas. I think that is a very good thing to do because for us to go online we need our gadgets to be charged and if we don't have access to electricity even solar energy in the rural areas it will really be a problem secondly the mention of digital literacy needs to be inclusive in the places where young people are found this is in schools i would urge all the stakeholders available here to make it a point to include digital literacy in the curriculum so that as children are going, they learn what it is to be online, what it is to use social media and any other digital platforms. Because COVID-19 has shown us that life had to relocate from physical meetings to online meetings. As such, everybody needs to be aware of how to use di these digital media platforms. Allow me to call upon uh, your honor, Madam Mary Chilima, to wrap up this session and give a few remarks. Thank you.
Thank you very much. It's been quite a productive afternoon. <laughs> My brain is a bit overloaded as I had to listen to each and every speaker, hoping that uh, I can give a little bit of what they've said and uh, regurgitate it as I close. Um, allow me to say all protocols observed. Uh, the recurrent themes that I picked up from just listening to the various speakers are, number one, girls want to be online and they're willing to fight for their rights to be online. And they're asking us to support them in various ways. For starters, they're asking for governments to first of all, make sure that the social infrastructure that is needed to be a platform for digital inclusion is in place. I'm happy to hear from the Minister of Information that they're looking at, um, is it energy, food security, education, and what was the fourth one? May I just add access to schools through <laughs> ease of transportation and roads as well. Might as well throw that in. And uh, I was very proud to find that we're an example to others. We heard, uh, I think it was Stacy from Uganda say she's appealing <laughs> to, to us to speak to Uganda to make sure that they too have Wi-Fi hotspots in public spaces. So I'm sure the ministers will see how best they can relay that information. In terms of the partners, um, the EU alluded to the fact that uh, they do consider digitalization as a critical aspect, and they see it as an enabler for individuals and businesses to grow economically, and that they're working with the Malawi government in different aspects to support um, that social infrastructure, but also to promote digital literacy. And they did uh, mention the Spotlight Initiative as one of those projects. The girls in total spoke about different aspects. Um, they want the rural girls to be considered and to be included. And uh, they also would like the boys to be made aware of what gender equality is, because apparently it's creating resentment and anger as the boys are feeling like they're being left behind. So the onus is for all of us, government, parents, partners, to make sure that we clarify why we're always talking about the girl child. They need to understand that the girl child is quite far behind, which is why we are focusing on her. But that our focusing on the girl child is in no way taking away from the boy child. We're trying to level the playing field, but maybe we can do better in communicating that message. Um, I noted from the Facebook presentation, unfortunately I couldn't hear it very clearly, but uh, what I picked up was that their platforms consider safety and protection as critical and that we should report we can report anonymously, we can report openly, but they have a strong reporting framework that we can utilize. And uh, I also heard them mention something about artificial intelligence that is actually seeking out inappropriate content and blocking it to make sure that our children are not, are not exposed to nudity and uh, um, other unsavory aspects of the, of the dark, dark web. Um, what else? I think uh, the potential for girls in the digital space is quite immense and uh, the need for awareness campaigns to understand this new technology and to understand how we're supposed to behave online and also there was the legal aspect that was uh, um, spoken about. Um, some feel that we have enough laws and we need to enforce and uh, others feel that we don't have <laughs> laws. So I think, again, awareness of what the laws are, what uh, digital behavior is appropriate and, appropriate and what is inappropriate is important. And that is not just for Malawi, it's across the whole world. 
And another recurrent theme was the issue of fake news or misinformation or disinformation. I must say this does not only apply to the children or the girls, it's everybody. And I think we all need to learn how to discern what is real and what is not. I've been a victim of fake news numerous times. You learn to ignore it, but apparently that doesn't help because it's, it keeps recurring. So maybe we need better, better efforts and better strategies on how to address this once and for all. But I think it's, it's quite, a, quite a steep mountain to climb. It's not something that we can do easily, but we need to start. And uh, let me conclude by saying that uh, there have been calls for digital literacy to begin from primary all throughout secondary and uh, tertiary education to make sure that the generation we're raising is aware and can participate fully. Um, I can't possibly try to cover everything, but uh, allow me to say that it's been an honor to participate, and I look forward to making sure that our girls are free to be online so that they can take advantage of the opportunities that the world presents. I thank you for your attention. Good day. The end of this event. Um, the girls of Africa who joined this conference have uh, issued a communique which they would like to read out. They are worried about uh, what COVID-19 exposed, the possibility of a world where we may not be able to meet physically and learn using the classrooms that we have built and this has exposed the need to um, enhance our ability to utilize digital um, opportunities. And as you might have noted, we are uh, celebrating this day on the theme uh, Digital Generation, Our Generation. The digital generation is here. It is our generation. But still, there are many challenges that have to be addressed and to make sure that the different governments that participated in this conference um, prioritize these issues. They have issued a communique, which I would like to invite Alice and Elizabeth from Rwanda to read it out. It's a, it's a short uh, one-page, uh, two-page uh, statement, after which we will invite Mr. Samuel Noga uh, from Paolo, uh, Plan Aulo uh, Director, uh, to address us. But for now, our guest of honor, ladies and gentlemen, let's listen to the reading of a communique which has been put together by the girls from Africa. Thank you. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. First, excuse me because Alice is not available here. My name if you is can Elsa start from Bay. the top, if you can hear me, uh, just start over again so that we can capture the whole communique. Thank you. Yes, thank you too. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Elizabeth, 15 years old, from Rwanda. We, the girls from Africa, are played to be commemorating the International Day of the Girl 2021. Under the theme, Digital Generation, Our Generation. As we commemorate the important day, we want to recognize the work different countries, organizations, and Africa Union have done to ensure that girls in beautiful, 
continents are able to grow and thrive. We also, however, are concerned about the number of girls that have been affected by the current ongoing pandemic. A lot of us have not been able to go back to school as a result of early marriage, teenager pregnancy, lack of school fees. In Finland, some countries have not opened schools. In line with this year's theme of the International Day of Girl, we are concerned by the increase of online abuse. Increased fake news and poor internet access for the majority of us. The spread of fake news in the last two years had increased. This caused by the following. Anxiety because of fake news, the majority of us does not know what to believe, does not know what to believe, and this has caused the overthinking, especially on stories with COVID-19 vaccines and schools. The second is the low self-esteem. Fake news shows any realistic world causing us to doubt ourselves and capabilities leading to low self-esteem. The third as the last one is the negative thoughts. Also, a lot of fake news in negative and paints our world as very bad and evil, thus leading to having negative Thoughts. The next, as we accumulate this year's day of girl, we have the following request. The first request is this. We want people to stop sharing fake news of and rumors it is not good to us and our world. The second point, perpetrators of fake news should pay and face consequences of their actions. Governments should make sure people who create and spread fake news are taken to court. The third point, there should be equal opportunities to access technology. Many girls still don't have access to technology and they are missing a lot. Thus, we ask the government, Africa Union and other people to make sure that girls get computer and phones. The fourth, point, digital literacy should be taught from primary schools up to tertiary and should be inclusive for all. We are in the meeting because we know the importance of technology and we are asking that all children be, could be taught about digital literacy from young age. The third point, support for victims of online violence should be led through the hearing process by mentally health practitioners. Government and other people should make sure that girls who have been violated are given Counseling. The sixth point, there should be the way to track down the people who start 
and spread fake news. The seventh point, Facebook should improve on how people create accounts so that can avoid fake accounts being created. This would be in form of unique identity for each person opening an account. The eighth point is to reduce the impact of fake news on girls such as body shaming and bullying. There is the need for education on how fake news impacts the girls. The last request as the ninth point, there should be a news channel for girls only where they have access to resource news and news that is really. After this request, we also want to welcome to join the third Africa summit, African Girls Summit that will take place in November and hosted by the government of Niger. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for reading out that communique and I'm sure it will be made available to all the uh, uh, key stakeholders in this, um, in this discussion because it is very, very important. And uh, the uh, girls have lined out clear steps that need to be taken so that uh, the goals that they want can be achieved. So thank you so much, uh, Rwanda, for giving us that communique. Our guest of honor, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting closer to the end of the event. Before we are dismissed, I would like to invite uh, the last person to address us today, and that will be uh, the director for Plan Aulo, uh, Mr. Samuel Noga, and uh, he's going to join us online. Thank you very much, um, Mr. MC, and um, I think what I would want to do basically is try to understand um, what the girls of Africa have told us. But before I do that, Honorable Madam Mary Chilima, um, it's great to see you again. We met the last time during the GP summit, and I'm really glad that we've met again um, on this platform. And especially, I do recognize and appreciate your commitment to the issue of girls. Um, Her Excellency Sarah Agua, who unfortunately couldn't join us um, because she had to rush to take a flight. Excellencies present who have sat through this program are the scattered, including Facebook and other partners. Our eloquent and resilient girls who have spoken and have spoken very clearly and loudly to all of us, ladies, gentlemen. Um, I believe IDG for us provides an opportunity for us to be able to collaborate and discuss the progress being made in improving the quality of life of girls. And um, I do hear, and I think all of us did hear, when the girls were speaking, um, and I think um, the the one of the conveners from this panel also mentioned the issue of boys. Now we do recognize that gender transformative programming and initiative do recognize that gender equality is about boys and girls, and plan as an organization do recognize the fact that we need to work with boys, men, women, men um, to be able to address the issue of gender inequality. Now, that doesn't mean that we are leaving boys behind. I think um, her honor mentioned the fact that we are also looking at the reality of the situation between boys and girls. And based on the, um, the, the situation between boys and girls, we are programming in such a way that we provide equal playing field for both girls and girls to be able, boys and girls to be able to deliver on whatever commitment have been made through the African Union Agenda 2063 but also the AU Agenda 2040. Now, four things came out very clearly, and these were issues that came out from the girls. Now, one of the things that came out, which I heard the girls clearly say, is that girls are a critical part of decision-making processes, and we cannot deny that fact. I mean, girls have to be at the table, girls have to be part of the solutions, and that have come out very clearly when we listen to the communique that was shared by the girls themselves. Now, girls also are better 
um, and they do understand the realities that face them. And if we listen to the girls, they told us the challenges they face in, in assessing um, internet. They told us the challenges they face um, in trying to go online. And I think one of the ladies actually said, girls are afraid to go online because they are not too sure what people are going to say about them. So girls do understand their situation. They do understand what they go through. You understand that they themselves have to be part of the solution and they have given us the solutions which they think we need to be able to provide equal playing field but also improve the issues facing girls on the continent now online bullying cyber bullying whatever we choose to call it um, is actually an assault on the right of girls and we have to understand that that is what it is we cannot give it any other name. It is a violation of girls' right to be able to express themselves freely. It is a violation on their right to be able to associate with whoever they want to associate with whilst they are online. And I think for us and as an organization, one of the things we try to do through the IADG, the International Day of the Girl, is to make sure that we are not observing the day as an event, but we are seeing the day as a sequence of initiative, activities, programs, advocacy, that we need to do to ensure that commitment made to girls by our government, by the African Union, has been implemented. And I like the fact that was stated by the ombudsman, and I like the fact that it's not supposed to be ombudsman, I'm the ombudsperson, that we have a lot of laws in Africa. I mean, there's no denying that we have a lot of laws in Africa. There's no denying we have a lot of um, initiative in Africa. I think the challenge has always been how do we resource how do we um, provide structures and how do we implement these legislations and laws and policies that we have? And so as the girls were speaking and as I was listening to them, one of the things they said is that we need to implement these legislations and policies. We need to make sure that we are resourcing them. We need to make sure that we are providing adequate awareness around them. And um, I like the fact about the legal literacy that we need to provide. I think in most cases, what we do see is the ignorance on the part of our girls. And I like the fact that Facebook, um, together with in Total News and Plan, would be undertaking a series of training for girls, um, raising awareness about the safety method they need to put in place, but also building their capacity to be able to surf the internet and service safely. Now, we do realize that with COVID, I mean, we've all now resorted to working online and working remotely. And part of that also means that our girls would need to be on the internet, they need to associate through um, social media, they need to spread themselves through social media. And unless we are providing that assurance of protection and security for girls, a lot of girls are going to be left behind. Now, as an organization that believes in the ability and the power of girls, we do make a commitment that plan would continue to work with our partners, would continue to work with our stakeholders, would we'll continue to work with everybody who have been part of today's celebration to say that, yes, we are going to empower the girls. We are going to provide opportunities and spaces and platform for girls to be able to bring their issue to the table. We are going to make sure that the girls' voices are heard um, in their own voices. Um, we're going to make sure that plan provides resources and opportunities for girls to be able to be who they are. Um, we believe girls have the potential and everybody who have been on this platform listening to the girls, um, um, listening to what they said, listening to how they shared their opinions, do recognize that yes, Africa has talent and opportunities to bring up what the girls are able to do. And unless we commit ourselves as parents, unless we commit ourselves as partners, as stakeholders, as government, as duty bearers, to ensure that we are supporting our girls, we are going to grow into a continent where the girls are going to be left behind. That is not to say, like I said in the beginning, that we are leaving the boys behind, but that is to say that we want to provide an opportunity where we do support gender equality. So by ending uh, my remarks, I would want to say that as an organization, we are going to support the um, spread and also the distribution of the communique um, issued by the girls. We are going to share with African Union and the regional economic communities we are going to share with our partners and make sure that when we are reporting next year, we have step in place, holding ourselves accountable to the communique um, issued by the girls. And also to draw on one of the things that's, that was said by the girls, we want to employ our honorable minister. Um, the girls have said hashtag free data bundles, hashtag free data bundles. Um, this goes to the government of Malawi when we meet here next year. 
and when the government of Malawi is hosting us, one of the first questions we'd want to ask is where are we and what do we do with that hashtag? But also when the various um, specialized technical committees of the AU meet, and I'm sure one is going to happen soon, would want the government of Malawi um, to share their experience in providing data hotspot, Wi-Fi hotspot to girls and people in Malawi so that we we'll have other countries to be able to emulate that. On that note, let me say once again that Plan International and our partners are very pleased to be part of this commemoration. We do understand that girls are the vehicle for Africa's growth, and unless we invest in girls, unless we provide support for them, unless we protect them, the continent is not going to set forward. And our aspiration for Agenda 2063 and our aspiration for Agenda 2040 are going to be just slip services. So thank you very much, everybody, for being part of this occasion. And we believe that as we go through the year until another IDG 2022, we are going to be working on our own commitments and our own um, initiative to be able to bring the girls to the level where they have to be. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Back to you um, in Malawi. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Samuel Noga. Director of Plan Aulo. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor, this marks the end of the commemoration of the International Day of the Girl for the year 2021. As we are winding up, allow me to recognize the help and the wonderful work from my friends, Michelle Grace Piri from Malawi, Malumbo Banda from Malawi, and Ali Kigundu from Uganda. Let's give them a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. We have had a successful event that was uh, joined by people from all over the world, Malawi, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Lesotho, and Namibia. And we had a consistent uh, chat on the platform and people who joined from the, uh, the moment we started up to now. And we'd like to thank them so much for being part of this successful conference, and we really appreciate your time. Allow me to also extend our gratitude on behalf of uh, Plan International Malawi to Mtoto News and uh, Plan International's African Union Liaison Office for putting together such a successful event and all those who participated, the panelists, and most importantly, the young people and the girl child. Thank you so much for making this year's event a huge success. As we are leaving this place, a quick announcement. The owner of uh, a vehicle uh, registration number BW7194, you are requested to go and move your vehicle. Uh, BW7194. 9-4, you're requested to go and move your vehicle. Our guest of honor, ladies and gentlemen, we are requested to take a group photo outside. My friend Rogers Siula is going to guide us on where exactly we're going to take that uh, group photo, after which we will request you to just hang on for a minute for uh, our uh, members of the uh, press to conduct some, in uh, some interviews, after which you will be requested to take your leave. Otherwise, I would like to thank you all for creating time to be part of this event. I wish you a lovely evening and goodbye. John. Just believe.